you've read the RNS, you've seen the videos. Now meet Henrik. See the equipment. See the modules. We said it was simple. Let us show you how simple it is. This is the first module we'll be taking and this can do typically up to about 25% of the kiln effluent depending on the type of kilns that it's going to be applied to and then obviously being modular it's just expansion but in terms of what we've got on here could you just take us through exactly how it works? Uh, this side is the kind of gas conditioning area so you have the gas coming in here and going through a uh, cooler and then you go through filtration for the Aqualung technology, because we are not very sensitive to acids, there is uh, no more pretreatment needed than uh, the cooling of the gas and taking out condensate and any particulates we might have. So just an off-the-shelf heat exchange, you're taking it down to an off-the-shelf off equipment that basically just removes any excess dust particles that we have from emissions. And my understanding is when you're on site, it literally thought it might be a bag house, but actually, because of the nature of our industry and how clean our effluent gases are, then this is satisfactory for your membrane technology. Yes, obviously the low need for pretreatment really uh, really drives down the capex and also the standardization of the parts as well. And that makes the technology very, very scalable. And that's exactly what drew us to Aquila. In the next phase, you have the uh, rotating equipment. This is primarily just to make, uh, to create the driving force, which kind of helps the transportation of CO2 uh, across the membrane. So you have a uh, vacuum pump on the downstream and then on the in the feed side you have a blower basically to create a small overpressure and then the mo main driving force is, um, is uh, vacuum uh, on the permit side. And this saves a lot of energy because pressuring the feed gas as you do with conventional membranes is very very costly because of the volumes of gas. Well, obviously with our volumes we're looking at quite high volume of CO2 concentration in our outgasses which actually then even if we applied it to old membrane technology, we would still be in a better position than what you've historically has used membrane technology for on gases where you may have 6% concentration. With our level of concentration, we would actually get more efficiency anyway. Completely correct. Actually, the uh, lime uh, blue gas is uh, very, very attractive for, uh, for our technology. And you have a lot of natural driving force there because of the CO2 content. And in that sense, actually lime is probably going to be easier and cheaper to decarbonize than a lot of the other industries. Then going further down, we have the actual core of the technology, which is the membrane bank. The membrane bank is, of course, flexible in how much uh, flow you can have through. You can deal with the, uh, large variations in flow, which you have in a lot of live operations, basically. And then, of course, the capture rate is linear. So the more membrane area they have, you have, the more modules and the bigger modules, the more CO2 you can capture. So as we scale up the unit, we will have the same amount of membrane slots, but the, but the membrane might be bigger than this in order to drive the economics. So this is a very easy, easy way of scale up without the need for major rebuilding. So what's the secret behind the membrane? So just, just take me through, we've, we've got two different types. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a little bit bigger than that one. Yes. What's the difference? Yeah, so the difference, as you were already implying, is purely the, um, the diameter uh, and size. And the higher diameter means more hollow fibers. So if you go from four to eight centimeter diameter, you go four X up in, um, in the membrane area. So. In the, uh, uh, the next generation membrane might be 25 centimeters in diameter and then you could increase the, uh, by still having a unit which could fit in the same, more or less the same slot as this, you could have a unit that is 20, 15 to 20 times so bigger. scalability is not necessarily how many containers we need, it could just be we increase the diameter of this and we still keep the same amount of containers but we can actually get a far greater capture. Yes, exactly. The capture is uh, completely dependent on either you need these many of these modules or you just simply need bigger modules. 
these, all they do are to be a housing for the hollow fibers that are doing the job, basically. Fully scalable, highly compact, aligned with our 2040 net zero targets.